What is it that we have here, Paul? So the first one here, what we have here to review is the Leica A60. Is that what it is? Yes. The Leica A60S that came from I Miller Microscopes. I'll add a link to the video description below when the stream is done. And what do we have to the right? The right is the one that we um, suggest, uh, what we have an affiliate link for, for the Amscope. Uh, this is actually the better one, uh, one step up, because it has the trinocular port if you want to use a camera. But it's, it, other than that, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, so the one on the right, typically depending on sales, coupons, how you configure it, somewhere between five and seven hundred dollars. And this one on the left, the Leica, is about a hundred sixteen hundred dollars or so? Sixteen. Yeah. Around sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred dollars with the boom arm stand that we're showing here that we have with it. So first impressions, uh, it's it's a microscope. Um, I think the head looks a little clunky. Um, I don't know if it looks better or not. Uh, putting it together was nice and easy. It's all straightforward. Now, on to other things with it, though. The light is amazing. I have to give this thing that. The light is a very nice light. Uh, it has this uh, removable diffuser, so you can get a nice soft circle of light, or if you take it off, you're going to get the nice harsh circle of light. So you could get a little bit more focusing, a little bit more shadows and things, or use the diffuser and it's not going to reflect as much in things and stuff that's shiny. It's adjustable. Fits nicely on this microscope. I do like that it's also a warmer white. Most of the LED ring lights that I've been able to find are this really cold white. And yeah. it gets a little straining on the eyes after a while. And I've also noticed that the ring that when I use the camera and I set the white balance, it automatically removes a bunch of blue from my light because it's so blue balanced. But this light is the lot. The LED light that comes with it is pretty nice. It's it's a very nice color temperature too. As for the microscope head, um, I'm not exactly impressed with the way it mounts on this arm, or how it moves, or how it hangs. The the arm flops around. The only way to turn turn it is to put all the weight onto one side of it. So then the, the arm wants to flop. If you want to keep it mobile, there's a flat spot on this side here that keep, it keeps it standing in the right position. So if you want to try to keep it mobile and keep this loose, once you get it into your position, then it flops forward. And it just a, it's a weird angle to where you're... The, the depth of field on this is really good. We'll talk about that in a minute. So you don't really notice that you're on an angle. The only way you would notice you're on an angle is, is having to look through the eyepieces. Um, I, so I'm not exactly impressed with the stand or the way the focusing rack connects to it or anything like that. It's, it's very simplistic and a little, a little bit over-simplistic. A little clunky. Because of the having the set screw over here, you can only turn it so far in one direction. But you can turn it all the way in the other direction. Can but you then, compare that to how the if we look at this one, th this this is this is the one thing that I really don't like about this microscope is that you can't just set it like this and turn it to wherever your work is facing. So if I if I need to move this out here, and you know it, it's set like this, I'm working like this. Now I want to move my board out past the boundaries of the table so I can look at something like this. I just turn the head right there. It doesn't adjust anything with the armature, the arms, anything. The head just spins on its axis right in the microscope focusing rack. So that, 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 that's a sim more, more complex but simplistic in operation. This, this, is, this is well used. This, this was designed by somebody that uses these things every day, I think. And how does that, how does the, that differ from the Leica? The Leica, it's just because it's on a boom arm. I, I, it, it's a little unfair to, to, um, to compare the double boom arm that has bearings in it and everything with this, this single boom arm, but it, it's just, it, it's not exactly great with the way it is. It, it's not, you're not rotating it on its axis, you're rotating it from back here from the focusing rack. Which is not, it's not terrible, but it, it, it is, I guess if you were used to it or whatever, you would never notice the difference from, from having an amp scope where it just pivots right there in the middle.
The next thing that, that I don't really care for on this is the eyepieces. If on the amp scope here, if we want to increase our magnification for certain jobs, uh, just take out the eyepieces, buy some more powerful eyepieces, we just increase the magnification of this. This thing, you would, the only way you could do that is to put a Barlow lens on the bottom of it because these eyepieces are, do not come off of here. I, I've tried. I haven't looked and see if I could buy something. Maybe there's a tool that releases them. I don't know. But I'm sure there are, uh, th these, these are readily available all over eBay. Generic, real, whatever you want to get. These I've never seen. I'm sure somebody's going to scream at us in chat because you can't actually change it or something. As far as uh, image quality and using it, I like, I like and dislike the image quality through this microscope. One, the inter interpupillary uh, adjustment is kind of difficult. And you have more, you'll see something in the, all of the literature about this that you have a lot of depth of field. And you do have a lot of depth of field, and you do have a lot of 3D view to it. Everything looks more 3D in this. It looks almost hyper-real with how much 3D is you're seeing in the, the view. The, the, I guess the objective lenses are a little bit farther apart, but it makes it harder to look at when, you, when you're trying to get used to the microscope. When you first look through this, it's as if you're trying to look at one of those, um, one of those magic eye posters where you have to unfocus your eyes and all of a sudden you see the 3D image. When you look through this, I'm not seeing one capacitor that I'm trying to look at. I'm seeing a double image of it side by side and I have to concentrate and focus my eyes to bring it together to one capacitor. Once I do that, the image is beautiful. The, the, there's, there's a lot of depth of field, there's a lot of 3D view to it. Uh, the, the, it's bright, it's very bright and clear, but for the first couple minutes of me getting my eyes used to that, it, it, it actually hurt my eyes. It gave me some, it, it felt like I was getting eye strain and fatigue trying to get my eyes to get used to it. I think my eyes have gotten used to it. I've used it for a little while, and it, the, the image is really nice. The image is something that I actually really wish I could show you. Uh, we could, sh again, if you want to see what the amscopes look like, I have countless YouTube videos showing you exactly what it looks like because there's a trinocular port and it's simulfocal, so I can have the trinocular port open while I use it and still have a full view. This one has no trinocular port. I don't believe there's an option to get the A60 with the trinocular port. I couldn't find one. And so the sad part there is the only way that I could actually show you what this looks like uh, since I, is by taking the camera and putting it into the the eyepiece, which is not exactly an ideal way to do it. Paul has a more steady hand, so let's see what he can do here. Now, th this, you have to understand something with this. Even with the, the trinocular port and a uh, microscope camera over it and everything, you're not getting an actual representation of what you see in a microscope. Anybody who's actually used one of these microscopes will tell you that um, right now you're seeing a flat image. You're seeing a flat, single image from one eyepiece. That's all you ever see on camera. It's not 3D. This, this actually is full 3D quality. You see, you see the, the height of it. You can, you can, with your eye, measure the height of the components and where your tools are in relation to that when you're looking through both eyepieces. You don't get to see that when you're, when you're just seeing one of the images from one of the eyes or from the trinocular port on top. Can we give them an idea just, I know it's not even, but let's say put the board under the amp scope and put the camera up to the port. Sure, just to let me focus it. So it is, it, the amp scope is much less 3D view to it, but I don't know if the, the, the Leica gives you more than $1,000 of 3D view on top of it. See, this looks virtually identical. From one to the other, through one eyepiece, I think it looks virtually identical. You're, you're, you on the other side of this video are not going to be able to tell at all the difference between one or the other. They both look bright. They both look steady and flat. 
They're, they're nice images. It's, it's the, the 3D separation is where the money is in these things. That's why you get one of these microscopes, you, you, so you can see the, the, how far away everything is, what, what size everything is. It is definitely something that takes a lot of getting used to. If you are coming from an amscope, I just tried to look at my fingernail under the Leica, and it, you do have to put a lot of concentration and effort in to, if you're used to using, let's say, an amscope or an Omano, because it does kind of mess with your eyes a little bit, getting used to the 3Dness of the image. But I think it's the same as if you were um, getting used to uh, looking at like a, a 3D, um, one of the virtual reality machines or something like that. It feels the same. Sometimes they don't want to blend exactly right and that you, you feel your eyes trying to fight with each other, trying to get the two images to become one and become 3D. People are saying that the Leica seems to look better. Leica looks better. Leica has more polarization going on. No, oh, through the camera? Yeah. Mm. And then the, the stand itself, we're about to run out of battery on this camera. The stand itself, I, the, I think this stand is horrible. This stand is, this is the stand I have at home too. This stand is beautiful. It, it moves nice. It's steady. This is, this is a great compromise between being mobile and, and being on a, a boom arm stand, which is really stable. So this thing is really stable, but still mobile. If we go to the, the other room, our other uh, uh, microscope stands that we have, we have, uh, we run the gamut through all of the uh, microscope stands. So the, the boom arms that, that uh, are completely mobile, they, they get really shaky at times. Some of them are absolutely awful. The, the single arm stand, the single arm um, really movable one that Amscope has is absolutely awful. It shakes like crazy. You think you're watching a Jessa video. <laughs> The, the double arm one that I use on my desk is, is a lot more stable, but it's still shaky. And then Lewis has a single arm, uh, a mono stand that's something like this, but it's, it's heavier. And it, it seems to be more stable than this stand. Although this stand does have a really long reach with this bar. This bar can go really far out. Yeah, that stand does seem to be a little heavier. And the base, this thing is really heavy. I just weighed this whole, this whole setup is uh, 42 pounds for, for everything here. I didn't weigh that one. Should weigh that one. Yeah, if if you're doing repair, I don't know what Paul's opinion would be. In my opinion, I can't justify the near one thousand dollar price difference from one to the other. Further, if you're trying to teach people, if you have employees and you want to try and teach them micro soldering or see what they're doing, you really don't have an option to do that here because you don't have a trinocular port. Whereas with the money that you save buying the Amscope over the Leica you could buy some camera and still come out ahead and a monitor and be able to see what it is your trainees are doing. Whereas, what do you think? I, I, I don't... I think it's a good microscope. I do like the image. I don't think it's $1,000 worth. There's, there's $1,000 between these two. I don't think you, you've moved $1,000 to go from here to there. And to be clear, I do, would have a bias uh, somewhat towards the Leica since we were told that if we review this, good or bad, uh, we do get to keep it for free. So just uh, throwing that out there. So th th there is, th this isn't a fully impartial review since uh, I got something that's worth $1,600 in exchange for being able to review it. I definitely like the, the, the light on it. I wish Amscope would offer a light that was actually... I, I keep looking on their site, and all the lights that I buy from them are not the warm LEDs. I wish they would send out this more neutral, uh, neutral, warmer LED, because it is much easier on the eyes. It's just, again, that that's... The, I, the light is spectacular. I feel silly saying that the light is spectacular, given the $1,000 price difference, because that, that shouldn't be what it is that's making this so much more impressive. I don't know how much this light is on its own, but the, this, this is a really nice light. It's not that many elements... It's not as many elements as uh, the Amscope lights that we get. We get, a, I think the Amscope ones are 144 tiny 3 millimeter LEDs. This is only a couple. They have um, big lenses over them. 